Hi YouTubers, it's your girl Shannon from EV and Chill. In today's video, we are gonna talk about the latest updates with EV trucks, and I'm gonna share with you which truck we just put a deposit down on. What? Yes, I know. You guys might remember a while ago we put a deposit down on the Cybertruck, but you guys, we just put a deposit down on another vehicle, so I'm gonna share those details with you a little bit later. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you the specs of that new truck. But you guys, right now we are hangry, so we need to go get some lunch. But don't worry, I'm gonna share all the details with you along the way. So I wanna give you guys a current garage update as far as what's happening with our vehicles now and maybe a future vehicle that could be joining our family. So if you're not too familiar with our channel, we do own a 2019 Tesla Model 3 and this 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. And I've loved both vehicles. I love having an EV car, I love having an EV SUV, but I'm really excited to try out an EV truck. And there are a lot of really cool ones coming out on the market. And you guys might remember a while ago we put a deposit down on the Cybertruck and Tesla said that the Cybertruck production would start at the latter end of 2021, which would be about now. So we were really hoping that we would have a Cybertruck by the end of this year, but that's not happening. So things have been pushed back considerably. I think Elon even said in his last company meeting that production on the Cybertruck wasn't even gonna start happening till the latter end of 2022, and main production wasn't even gonna be happening until 2023. So that puts us like at least a year out from getting our Cybertruck. So that's really disappointing for me. But that kind of got me interested in looking at other vehicles that are coming out. So Ford has, of course, the Ford Lightning, uh, GM has the EV Hummer coming out, Rivian, that has a truck coming out too. There are a lot of other viable options. So I started going down the list and I started thinking about which one might be a possible option that we would want to bring into our family. So let's look at the breakdown of each one. So let's go down the list of trucks that I was considering aside from the Cybertruck. Let's start with the GM, the Hummer EV that looks really, really cool. It looks like a beast of a vehicle, but there are a few things that are making me not consider it. First things first, let's talk about the size. You guys, that vehicle is 9,000 pounds. This mama is looking to drive down the street in a truck, not in a tank. That is crazy. That's humongous. Okay, so that kind of like is already something I'm not loving. Number two, and I'm not saying I'm a bad driver because if I'm driving a tank, I will crush any vehicle on the road. Okay, but number two, um, it's from GM, and I'm not knocking GM totally. However, let's be real, you guys, between you and me, I think they have a few battery issues going on. Um, I'm looking at you, Chevy Bolt. Okay, uh, the third thing, I'm not loving the price point. If I'm gonna spend like six figures on a vehicle, I don't think it's gonna be a truck like that. Okay, so those three things automatically just kind of nix the Hummer off of our list. So let's talk about the next vehicle, the Ford Lightning. Okay, I like it. It's made by Ford. Ford usually makes pretty good products. I mean, the F-150 is like the best selling car in America. Um, so clearly they're doing something right. And I've loved this Mustang. This Mustang is made by Ford. So far we've had a lot of positive experiences with it. However, we have had a few negative ones that really stand out in my mind. Now, I guess to sum it up, the Lightning is really cool. It's a full-size EV. I mean, it's basically like a self-contained generator. That's really awesome. I'm really impressed by the hardware of it. I mean, even the hardware in this Mustang is really awesome. Hardware-wise, the only issue we've had really is like the charging port door kept popping open that one time and Ford fixed that really quickly. Here is my downfall with the Ford Lightning. Software-wise, I'm just less than impressed. I don't think it's fully there. I think after coming from Tesla, Tesla is on it with software. Hardware, I don't know. Maybe if Ford and Tesla came together and had a baby, it'd be the perfect vehicle. Okay, but software-wise with Ford, I'm just not loving it. We've had a few issues with it. Um, phone is a key, still not working for me. Apple CarPlay still fails to connect a lot of the times. We've just had a lot of issues and I'm not fully comfortable, honestly, owning two Ford vehicles that are gonna use the same technology. Um, that to me is just a little bit scary. I don't think I really want to do that. So that's a big reason why Ford is off my list right now. Now that is gonna bring us to Rivian. And I'm gonna be straight with you guys, Rivian was not fully on my radar 100%. Like I knew they were there, it looked like they were gonna make a cool vehicle, but I wasn't fully considering them until now. And that's not to say that one day in the future I'll never own an EV Hummer or a Ford Lightning. Maybe one day I will, and maybe one day I'll love it. But as of right now, these are just kind of my current thoughts. 
So now let's talk about Rivian because they were on our radar. I mean, they were probably on your radar. I know they were on mine, but they weren't like a huge blip on the radar. Like they were there, but they weren't there. So I think the more I've looked into them, kind of the more excited I get about their product. And now let's state the obvious first because you guys, I have not seen an R1T. I have not seen an R1S in person. Um, I'm excited that maybe one day I could. So Rivian, hit me up, fly me out, show me your vehicles. Um, but from what I can see so far, it looks like it's going to be a really quality product. It's something that I'm getting really excited about. I mean, it's a nice looking truck. Uh, so the hardware looks like it's going to be there. It looks like it's going to be a real quality product. Um, the software looks like it's going to be really intuitive. I feel like right now it looks like it's already going to be ahead of like GM and Ford. And again, this is all just like my own speculations right now. But it looks like it's going to be a really quality product. And here's kind of where I'm thinking. If you want just like a little piece of lasagna, you're going to go out like on a date night. Maybe if you want something consistent, you want something average, you know it's going to be good, but it's not going to be fantastic. Then you might go to Olive Garden or Carrabba's. That's kind of how I see like GM and Ford. Like it's going to be good. It's going to be consistent. It's going to be something you can eat. But if you want something next level, you might go to like maybe a smaller mom and pop shop, maybe something a little higher rated on Yelp. That's kind of how I see Rivian right now. Like they're there, people know about them, and a lot of things, we don't know a ton of details about them, but the few details we do kind of separate it. They kind of pull ahead of like GM and Ford for me. So that's kind of what's really setting it apart. And I think software wise, it looks like they are a really software driven company, which kind of correlates to Tesla. So I really like that. I think software is something for me, and you might be different, but for me, software is something that can really make or break a vehicle. Is hardware important? Of course, you're driving a vehicle, but software is something that you're going to be interacting with constantly. The user interface, the screen, the technology, the features. You don't want something that's going to lag. You want something that's going to be like pretty intuitive. And so for me right now, Rivian is checking that box. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's get to the specs of the R1T that we put a deposit down on. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out the Rivian website here. And if we scroll down, we can see that we can configure the R1T or the R1S. And also you guys, the R1S, I like how it looks. To me, it's kind of reminiscent of like a Land Rover Defender. I think it looks pretty cool, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna configure the R1T right now. So let me show you our exact specs. We'll wait for this to load. Now, when we get to this page, the first thing you get to choose from is which package you'd like. For me, I like to choose the bigger package usually. <laughs> okay, but let's go ahead, let's take a look and we will compare the adventure package versus the explore package. Now the adventure package, you can see it starts at $73,000 where the explore package starts at $67,500. Now let's go ahead, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison that they conveniently offer on their website. Now the few things that stand out to me, number one is going to be that the adventure package has the power tonneau cover where the explore package has a manual one. Honestly, to me, not a huge deal. I'm totally fine with the manual. So that's a point in the explore packages favor. Another big thing I have going to the inside because looks matter people, it's a big deal. The adventure package has a natural grained ash wood interior. And I think that looks really nice. I think that's going to make it look a little bit more luxe where the Explore package has the matte black interior. So I feel like that's standard, kind of basic, pretty average like truck look. But I think when we get to the interior and you see it, I don't think it looks bad. So I'm gonna again stick with the Explore package for this, another point in the Explore's favor. Now another big deal because it looks good, we wanna feel good. So for me, that means heated seats. It could be 90 degrees in the summer and you guys, I'm still gonna have my heated seats on. I'm just very cold natured. Now the adventure package, that's gonna have heated and ventilated seats where the explore package is just gonna have heated seats. For my husband who's hot natured, he might just have to deal with having a sweaty back. As long as it has heated seats, I'm fine with that. And it's got a heated steering wheel, so bonus point. Okay, so all of these things that come together for me, um, the Explore package is going to do just fine. So we chose the Explore package. This brings our current price tag to $67.5. I feel like that sounds pretty decent. Now let's go down a little bit further and look at the other options that we can add. Going to the battery pack, the large pack which is included, that has a range of 314 miles. 
For me, 314 miles is totally doable. I mean, right now with our Mustang Mach-E, that has a range of 230 miles, so 314, we're actually upgrading. And for this size, it's kind of between like a Ford Ranger and an F-150, so I think it's a decent size and that's decent mileage for that size. So I'm totally down with that. If you went with the Max Pack, you'd be getting 400 plus miles of range for an extra 10 grand. To me, not totally worth it. For you, maybe it is. <laughs> okay, but let's stick with the large pack here and let's talk about something else that is totally important, the color, because this is the first thing you're gonna see when you go outside to your garage every day. When you walk out of the grocery store, you want a color that's gonna be popping. So there are three colors that really stood out to me here. My husband, he really liked this one, the Rivian Blue. It is a really pretty color. And with these eyes, people, it would look so good. But our Mustang is already in blue. Do we want two vehicles? I don't think so. So let's look at the other colors here. Another color that stood out to me is this forest green. I think it looks really pretty. I think it looks really timeless. I think I could probably take some good Instagram pictures if I parked this next to an actual forest. <laughs> but even though I like it, it wasn't quite popping enough for me. So the color that we settled on was the Red Canyon. You guys, this looks amazing. This looks good on my computer screen. I can only imagine that it's gonna look even better in real life, right? <laughs> okay, but what I also love about this, this was kind of like the deciding factor here, people. When I look at the price tag, it bumps the price up to $69,000. Uh, 69,000, it's kind of a sign. I mean, 69, that is my favorite number, people. Probably yours too. <laughs> okay, so $69,000, that's our price tag right now with the Red Canyon. Now let's go ahead and look at the wheels and tires. We're gonna stick with the one that is already selected here, the 21 inch road tires that are included. Now surprisingly, like 21 inches, I'm pretty impressed by that number. Like those are some pretty big tires that's just gonna come included. So I like how this is looking just all the way around like that booty is popping. Look at that, mm, that looks so good. That's right, I just wanna tap that. Mm -hmm. Side view, looking good, front view. It's the whole package, it's like me, people. Okay, but let's go down a little bit further. We'll just check out the rest of the inventory here. Spare tire, not super interested in that. I don't think I really need it. Um, the off-road upgrade, I don't think I really need to add that. For $2,000, I don't know if it's totally doable for me because I don't think I would really use it that much. Now let's move on to another important spec and that's gonna be the interior because that's where we're gonna, where we're gonna be spending most of our time and we're gonna wanna like what we look at. So let's take a look here at our color options. Oh, and real quickly, take a look here. This is the interior just with the black finish. I think that looks pretty fine to me. I don't think it's like overwhelming. I don't think it's underwhelming. I think it looks pretty standard and I'm cool with that. Now let's take a look at the actual seats themselves. In black, I think it looks good. I think it looks standard. I think it looks truck. <laughs> but let's take a look at the other option here, the Ocean Coast. You guys, this one is popping to me. This is speaking my language. It's clean, it's modern, it's beautiful. I'm loving the stitching here, that extra little detail. Mm, I love it. Now it's not as white as like Tesla white, so I'm wondering what it's gonna look like in real life, maybe like a blend between a white gray, which I think could look really pretty. But it's also interesting because this is kind of more geared towards like outdoorsy people, right? So I'm wondering if maybe you hike a trail, you're dirty, you're dusty, how are these seats gonna hold up? We'll see. If we do go with this vehicle, um, I'm definitely gonna do some tests for you here. But I really like the white, the Ocean Coast. We're gonna stick with that one. So let's go ahead and we will add that. Now moving on, they have some adventure gear you can add because this is more of an adventure outdoorsy truck. So they have a camping package that you can add. I think that just looks really cute, but we're not gonna add it now just because it's cute. So we're gonna pass on the camping package for now. I think if first comes to worst, we could always like make a fire and be really outdoorsy. And also since this truck is geared towards outdoorsy people, I'm more of a glamper myself. I prefer to camp in a hotel. I'm wondering if this truck might make me more outdoorsy. We'll see, it'll kind of be like an experiment. And we're gonna pass on the tent as well. I don't think we're really gonna need that right now. So let's go over to the summary here. These are the specs. We have the Explore package, the large pack battery, in Red Canyon, 21 inch wheels, Ocean Coast interior, due today our $1,000 deposit, which we already paid, and is fully refundable, so love that. Total price, $69,000, 314 miles of range, Deliveries begin January 2022. Let's hope that happens. I'm a little skeptical, but hey, we can hope. 
I think this looks really good. I'm really impressed with this so far. And I love the fact that Rivian is working on their own charging network. That's a total bonus point in the Rivian category. I like the fact that they're not relying on third party chargers completely like Ford is doing right now. Um, it's kind of reminiscent of what Tesla did. So I'm loving that. And I'm also loving the interior has that horizontal screen, totally not from Tesla, but you guys know I love myself a horizontal screen, vertical, just not for me. So loving this screen here. Okay, all in all, this is our package. This is what we are going with. This is hopefully maybe our new truck. Now I don't know what we're gonna do completely about the vehicles we do have. I've toyed with selling the Mach-E, I've toyed with selling the Model 3. There are really pros and cons to selling each of them. So drop me a comment below, let me know which vehicle you would sell, the Tesla or the Mustang, and which vehicle you would get because we still have the deposit down on the Cybertruck and we have the deposit down on the Rivian. Maybe we could even sell the Tesla and the Mustang and get two trucks. I don't know, there's a lot up in the air right now. So let me know your thoughts. That's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.